Welcome. I'm Jeremy Joe, and this is Jeremy Joe versus Manz Manzanita here today. Yep, super excited. Thanks for hosting Jeremy Joe. I'm excited to get back to the table here with some Sky Tear. Yeah, we uh, love playing this game. It's come out recently. Uh, we really enjoy playing this. Our background, we played a lot of Star Wars Destiny together up here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, We've been playing a lot of games together on the side as well. Yep, so much. But this one has just been just a delight of 2020 to discover and dive deeper and deeper into. So uh, hopefully you can enjoy hanging out with us today as we uh, get in a little deeper. I'm going to try and convince you to play the Carpe Diem deck, okay? I'm going to teach you. Uh, it only works like once or twice against an opponent, but it's a fun surprise uh, to play through. And yeah, I have just uh, kind of my... Uh attack deck here um just been tweaking a little bit and having a lot of fun with it as well and this game sky tear if you're new at all um is a game from pvp geeks um they're a small company based out of italy um it's awesome game we can't rave about it enough um yeah check out their website they support it so well you should play yeah and on discord everything community is awesome already and it's I don't even think people are able to get in front of it together as much. Um, so that's exciting. So we're going to dive right in here um, and get going. We are already, already drawn out the um, victory condition cards, and we laid them out here. So we'll uh, take a look at these right now. So we got, looks like we've got um, the Tamer, Invasion, and Onslaught going on today. And so... Onslaught is you get to try to defeat three heroes, enemy heroes. Uh, invasion, uh, starting from round two. Round two, you want to have these control tokens pushed all the way up against your opponent's towers. So right. if you can have that happening at the end of round two, three, or four, or five, then you will take home the victory. So that's more of a control. And then Tamer is uh, you got to get control of that uh, outsider in the middle and take out two heroes. So we kind of got two aggressive um, win conditions and one control win condition here. Perfect, and I'm gonna just switch it up here because we've got what is it was the middle one? Oh, invasion. Invasion. Uh, real quick, perfect. There we go, and we're all set. Um, awesome. So we got those set up, and I brought the OG outsider um, to the game as my outsider. Mm -hmm. And I brought the Dark Vigilante, and I'll talk later about why. Hopefully he makes it to the table, but if not, I'll tell you why we picked him anyway. And I'm going to try not to have him make it to the <laughs> table. I know what he can do with that Vigilante. It might not be good for us. So let's uh, see who's going to go pick first. Here. All right, let's throw something. I'm going to say Big S. Whoa. It was not Big S. Little S. Okay. Oh, you got some choices, Jeremy Joe. Sometimes I don't like the choices. Sometimes I just would rather deal with the problem. You know, right. like, I was oh, into this. yeah. I made the best of it. Yeah, yeah. Go with the excuses early on. But I think I actually know what you can do with the vigilante. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try to avoid it. Uh, so I'm going to go with the OG outsider. Outsider, so okay. You get to pick. And I will, I'll, I will always take the choice of turn over the outsider. I would like to go second for what my sneaky deck is doing. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. And we're going to get the go here and put our characters out. So going second. So I have to place one of my characters and picking him here. I think what I'll do is I will go with Eckerd right there. Okay. So when he puts Eckerd out, I know he's going to try and control minions out of the dome with Eckerd. What do we got here, folks? Now, when you lay these out in front of your opponent, don't put all the blue characters together. That's a secret. Kind of mix them up a little so your opponent's kind of like trying to figure out what exactly is he doing with this list. It's unclear. First thing you're going to want to do is put Estrada on lane one. Okay, so you're going to act like, hey, I'm going to come down with Estrada and control that lane big time. We know, you guys know what she can do in terms of control. And then you're going to stick Freyhel over there so it looks like you're just kind of supporting a blue character with a blue character. So you're sending a signal to your opponent that you're ready for this great control game on lane one. Back to his draft. All right, perfect. And I think I'll go with, um, actually, we're <laughs> changing it up. We're actually going to uh, put out our... Um, Minis to start, and oh, then we're right. gonna we're gonna replace them. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna replace them with their uh, these awesome tokens, um, so that you guys can see uh, as we play. It might be a little easier to identify who uh, is where on what. In fact, uh, I'm gonna do that now just yeah. so you can visually see. And so on the opposite side, we'll use our uh, minis to actually keep our health. Uh, so we're gonna kind of switch it up. It's a little different. Normally, that's not how you play, um, but when you're playing in person. 
the minis are awesome. So good. But here, maybe online, it might be a little harder to follow. So we're going to uh, keep it a little different. But I'm going to put, um, continuing on, I'm going to put, uh, how do I want to deal with this uh, problem of these blue ladies going left? I'm going to put uh, Shafathi, and then I'm going to go Korjoff on the opposite side there. All right, so he's put down two mages. We're a little bit concerned because we know mages eat through armor. But the truth is, we're not really setting up a game where we're playing defense. So we're just going to assume that we can outpunch him, and we're not going to worry too much about that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down uh, Korjoff over here in the back corner. And I'll we'll show, think of, we'll talk about why later, but then we're also going to follow that up with Neloquin. So if he hasn't been thinking that we're going mage heavy, suddenly we have two mages and a half a mage with uh, Freyhel's shapeshifted ability on the table. So they may have seen that coming, but they also were thinking about, you know, Miyuki and Akuti. So these are here just for smokescreen, really. Um, there, there is a contingency plan if you get no uh, aggressive um, win conditions, but really you're trying to sneak in a really super aggressive team as if it's not. So hopefully your opponent doesn't notice that in the first turn and a half of the game and has to make some bad choices later. All right, perfect. And then just to round mine out, I'm going to go with... Uh, how we say his name wrong? Sathuru. Sathuru, yep. Yeah, got it. Um, so we got them all set up here. So I actually have three mages. So it'll definitely be interesting because we're going to kind of be fighting fire with fire a little yes, bit. But you will. got a little bit more control than I do. So we're going to clear out these other characters. Um, and I guess I could have gone a little more control heavy. But I think fighting is just kind of fun. So awesome so what we're going to do is take our characters and stack our decks up here and shuffle real quick and we'll get that uh going here and then we'll draw up you're right when you first sit down to a game of sky terror it it looks to be a game about beating your opponent's characters off the board but the more you play it you realize the control aspect is uh is half to two thirds of the game so yeah it is you really you can't i like that you can't negate it it's you not like you it. just like uh oh, whatever it's not yeah. and in fact a lot of times you you have to play it even if maybe your deck is kind of built uh we played recently and i played the similar deck but i was trying to control yeah. and i i almost <laughs> won and i probably shouldn't have gone so attack on the last round but uh yeah it's definitely something which is awesome and i they recently uh, updated frenzy um, yes. which gives the uh, um, red uh, heroes a lot more firepower and just any character that can do an attack um, uh, really come in. And so kind of balancing out the control heavier side of the game was kind of a little bit more, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and so that's kind of been exciting to see. Yeah. So And those rules haven't been officialized. They're just kind of testing those rules with the Summer League right now. So we'll see which of those rules they like for the balance as the summer wears on. Yeah, and that's another thing about the game. Uh, the community's really involved, um, so they're kind of tweaking things. Not so much that you're like, I can't follow, no. but just enough to really uh, make it feel like, you know, the game will chain a little ways without having to have a huge amount of cards and new mechanics yeah. or anything to like really uh, actually drive people away in a way. So. Yeah, it's more tweaking for balance, and it's already really well put together, so... All right, so friends, I have a bunch of one cost, um, one mana cost cards in my hand. I'm fishing because I love to have a little bit of uh, the three, uh, well, as many three cost cards in my hand as I can in uh, my opening play. Now, here's the secret. What did I do to build this deck? There's only five cards in here that have three mana on them the four ultimates and then uh, one, uh, one other card. So. Really, it's going to be. It's not likely that I will hit very many, but uh, we're going to throw a lot of cards looking for those threes, and we're not too worried about what other cards. There's a few cards that do direct damage that I want to get in my opening mulligan, and as long as I have one or two of those, we'll be good. So I'm going to keep uh, three. Let's see what we get. I'm going to keep all six. I, I'm feeling Ooh. not bad about it. Uh, like he says, it's good uh, to have those lead cards. So it's always good when you see those three cost mana cards pop up. And a lot of one cost if you can. Uh, first round. So you can actually play some cards. Yep. Um, and I also have the Sky Tier Flux. So I could possibly roll into a two mana card if 
uh, things go well or maybe save that for a longer term. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm up first. So we got to figure out how we're going to do this here. All right, so I think what we'll do um, to really get it going here um, I think we'll go with Ekret here and get her out of the gate here and go with a move. So if you're good with that. Come on. All right, one, two, three. And we're going to worship. We're going to drop that right there. Ooh. This uh, opening move, which is popular. I guess I could be going for uh, minions right now, but I'm just going to try to bring the uh, <laughs> the pain here. And so now I'm going to perform attack. Okay. If you're good with that. So yes. she's at two uh, with a flip here. And it is one, so we go three. All right, so Frey, Hell, and Estrida both drop three, but they both have armor of one, so they just go down two from 16 to 14. They're not thrilled, but they'll deal with it. And I just really wanted to make all of your characters at the exact same health level to start it out. <laughs> but because I used um, an attack within her illusion, it uh, hits with the wind barrier, which applies slow to both of them, and it also, I can move them one. Aha, uh -huh. and actually the slowing does not happen. Oh. There's another card that might grant oh. you slowing. <laughs> I think I pulled that move last time <laughs> yeah. and then added low. So, so no slow. I was just trying to get one past Ethan, really, <laughs> really change him up here. But uh, we're going to move. In this case, this is not the best because it kind of already moves you in a way. Yeah. But it's not the end because I can do at least do that in my yeah. order. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Now... That is great. You're going to expect Eckert to come to the middle. Here's what I want to do this round. My goal is to have that dome at the end of this round. And um, Astrida is going to do what she does not typically do, which is she's going to run into the dome and lead from the hand. Um, I am waiting for him to present some targets. So if, even if I had gone first, I would just send Astrida into the dome and hang out there and wait for him to present some targets for my mages to sneak up on. He's already done that with Ekrit, so I know that I don't need to rush to kill Ekrit, but I know I probably have enough firepower out of these three to take Ekrit off the board. So I'm going to put Astrida in and have her lead um, in a three, uh, in a fashion that'll get me a, a three spot. So let's see. Um, check one of my ultimates. Okay. Uh, we're going to activate uh, Strida, and she's going to take a... You know what? She'll take a skirmish action, since she can already see you there uh, from that spot. So I'll declare skirmish. Okay. Move two spaces. I'm going to flip against Ekrit. All right. Oh, my goodness. We got a two. Isn't that exciting? That's so nice. <laughs> he has one armor, so he, she has one armor, so she reduces she goes that. down to 15. one. Now I'm hanging out here. I'm going to take a shapeshift action. And I don't have to have line of sight. I just have to be within three spaces of a friend to either shapeshift myself or a friend. So remember how I said we were going to put Korja off in the back? That's because you're going to sh you waste one of uh, Astrid's actions to shapeshift Korja off so that when Korja off activates later, he's fast and has an even deeper range into the map. Now, Astrid has got to do one more thing that is going to help us, and she is going to take this card and throw it underneath a lead from the hand. So and we know it's a three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we can at least assume. Now, if you're worried, that's typically not a great move because now she's a target for all his people coming in. But I feel pretty confident uh, that I can punish him for coming to try and get her. So, Right. Yeah. So in a case, some decks per se can do a lot more moving. But mm -hmm. you know my lineup in the sense that that's probably not what I'm going to be doing. So she's safe. Yep. A lot of times having somebody sitting on the edge with a lead card can be risky. But. Yes, I, I would be super scared if Eckhart hadn't already gone. I would never even come close to doing that. I kind of I was just kind of trying to get one extra little damage out of her. Which, which you might, did? Might not have been the right choice, but no, it, I did. You that. definitely got through, which is great. Yeah. Um, so my next move here, let's see, this is always the trick, right? Um, we are going to...
And I think what I'll do is actually get him, and I think I'll go with Shafafi here and actually move him up and go one, two, three. And then we're actually gonna go one, two. Mm. And then like you did before, I'm going to lead as well here. So I think we will actually, tough choices here. We'll go. There. Flat in my hand. Nice. Very nice. All right. So he says he's going to push hard on lane one. And we could respond to that. But we would probably have to come over and lead for three. Remember how I said we only have five three cost cards from our deck? And one of them is probably here. So we're going to pretend like we care about that lane. But we don't really. We care about getting people off the map turn one. So we're going to come in on Ekrit. Uh, and we're going to use all of Neliquin's actions to do that. He can just throw fire because he's a mage and he flips hard. I didn't get any any of my any of the direct damage cards I wanted for Korjoff. Typically, I move with him second, but he's going to be fast. So whatever he does with his third or fourth hero, uh, Korjoff might be able to respond with speed. So Nelikland's going to get as far out of the way, so he leaves lanes for people to move later. Nelikland's going to take a uh, skirmish action here. And go one two. And then he will use his skirmish against um, Ekrit, and he gets a one, which is so super sad. Yeah, he's a mage, so it goes through his oh, armor. Yes, that's but right. there are only seven plus ones in this deck, and <laughs> everything else is a plus two or a plus three. So that's the secret of this deck: is that typically skirmish is an action that just gives you a little movement and doesn't do much damage. But in this deck, every skirmish action is going to cost your opponent uh, some health, typically. Uh, so just one, and then we're going to do a little attack with Nelklin and it goes in for five damage right through the armor uh, so now we're down, down to nine health uh, and then we have to decide do i want to leave neliklin in here or do i want to move him out uh and i do want to leave him in here because i want to make sure that i've got the dome currently i have one plus potentially three so four five uh so if i um if I need, leave Neliklin in there, we're fine. We're going to worship, just because we have nothing else to do with Neliklin, we're going to throw down a token that he should be able to keep an eye on from most positions in this dome. Um, and that will help us later if we need to play a, um, a card that is not the right mana color. He, he can play power cards regardless of the runes required as long as he can see uh, that token. He also is then able to play Astrid's ultimate if we pull it up, so that's pretty fun. He's also able to play his ultimate to go and get Astrid's <laughs> ultimate and play it. There you his go. Ultimate come on. Too many combos. Too many combos. <laughs> I get. I gotta be slow on my attack here. Uh, I feel for her. She's dying quickly. So we're gonna get through into the action here, and um, I think what we'll do is we will give him a little time glitch. Uh, which will apply fast and remove any conditions. I don't have that right now. Okay. And so we're going to go with a move action. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. And we're gonna oh, he's stop up there. spots where I want to go stand. And then what we'll do, I think we will just hmm. Yep, let's go with an attack here. And we'll go against, uh, is it Nelquin or Strida. I think we'll go, he doesn't have any, yeah, we'll avoid going through armor. So okay. even though he's a, a mage, um, they're all they're all there and yep. and he's a little bit closer. So we've got three plus a flip here. So we've got plus one, so four. Okay, that's gonna hurt for four. One, two, three, four. All right. And then, whoosh, tough choices here. I really want to lay his illusion because he gets so much stronger with mm -hmm. that illusion out. Um, but I think I want Korjoff to be free will to do some stuff. So I think what I'll do is I will actually lead from the hand. Oh. Ah, so you're going to tie up my characters in there. You're saying that we likely both have lead for five worth in there. Right. And you kind of alluded mm. you really wanted to win that dome. I so do, I do. So maybe I'll make you have to really commit to it. Use but all the characters to get. The but dome. if you're gonna 
kill one of mine, that obviously takes one of my yeah. control points. So I'm looking at Sethiri there has 14 health. Korjoff can get to him in one move. He can then, and he's plus one from skirmish because he's shape shifted. He'll be another plus one on attack. If I'm thinking that I might flip twos for both of those, then I'm thinking that I've got a total of three, six, I have nine into a 14 health character. Uh, that would only leave five more damage to be done. Um, five is too much. I can't quite get that. Well, I can, but um, I would love it if there was only four more health I needed to get, which I could easily get out of our good friend uh, Eckert there. So, but he's shape shifted, so he has to be adjacent, right? Yeah. Fortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Eckert or with Korjoff right now. I'm gonna activate, and he's fast. Oh, but you led from the hand with him. I could just crush you if I could get him off the board. No, it's not worth it. It's I'm gonna, not. I'm it's not. Beat, it's too tempting. I tried to tempt you there. Beat you the traditional way. I activate Korjoff. He becomes fast. He's gonna right. move uh, five spaces. One, two, three. Oh, but. Ah, oh, you are tempting me because I could get a free shape shift action out of. Mm. You know what? You have tempted me away from it. We are, oh. we are uh, not going to. We're going to activate, so I do get fast. But now I'm going to take a skirmish action. Okay. And I'm going to skirmish one, two. All right. And flip. I assume there was no response. No response. Uh, so I'm plus one because I'm shape shifted, and um, that gives me. Oh, Ooh. and it's an ultimate. Ooh, look at this. Glacial Rebirth. Oh, full art. Full so art. exciting. It's beautiful. It's from Not the, uh, one I want to see, it. though. One, two, oh. three. Uh, and that was, yeah, a plus one. Make it four. Oh, that's hey, right. That's hey, not my a dreams good sign. are coming through. Okay, my dreams are really coming true. So I'm going to play uh, Biding Time with Korjoff so I can predict two. All right. It doesn't cost me any mana. I'll give a little peek here. Oh, that was good. I was going to get a. A card that was going to make me sad. <laughs> so we'll put that back down. And now we'll take we'll declare an attack action. All right. And you're good to go. Okay. He's got three. He has to be melee during this attack because he's shapeshifted. But he gets plus one, who's actually four, plus the flip, which is two. So six piercing damage straight through. Six. Okay, oh, so now man. he is at four health. What's going to happen? Um, the problem the is... The last thing that's going to happen <laughs> is that for my uh, third action, I am going to shapeshift a friend. We're going to shapeshift Freyhel over here. So she's ready to go, and she's piercing right off the bat. All right. Yeah. yeah. The problem is, where can you get to... Ooh. This is a good question. If I park it in a certain spot, I think I might be okay, right? Ah, you're going to try and block uh, How... Freyhel from getting into the dome. Yeah. That's clever uh if if i can that's okay. that's the the key here well i would be excited about that because on lane i what i really have sacrificed with this deck is any ability to fight on these lanes and right. if i don't if i don't have to fight on lane two and i only have to save lane one later tactician is the only thing that can beat me on control right now and that requires you to push on both lanes so i would love for you to be, be tempted into my fight in the middle because i just have to be adjacent <laughs> to both of them right on lane on yes. round two yes you don't have to break you don't have to bust out even any of the towers you just have to get the control token which to i could put the pressure on for lane two you could yeah and that means you have to that, kill three that Ooh. means i would have to have three heroes dead before we went to tally or i would have to go save one of those lanes and astrida is hanging out here on the edge that's kind of her job after she helps with the dome round one she comes out and she's supposed to keep a lane from completely disintegrating I'm gonna really make you work for it. Okay. We'll just say that much, make, just just for fun, because we know tacticians there or uh, <laughs> invasions there. Yeah. But uh, we're going to uh, hit up Korjoff, as we know. I'm not going to shape shift to get him fast. We're just gonna apply unfamiliar terrain, which applies fast. Okay. Uh, if that's okay with you, yeah, that's nothing. Absolutely okay. Right. No response. So he's gonna be fast now, and he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, he's gonna plug up that where i want to be right there so then he is also there and then i think with our what is the play well let's definitely do an attack and this is why i didn't um shape shift uh-huh um because he's still ranged if i go that he yes. has to attack the person next to him to so i'm already working on one character so i still have a shot at that person so i want i want to coming across coming yes. across so, so i still want to block here and shoot here instead of having to come over here you would get a little more damage but you're probably feeling pretty good that i'm down to 10 health already right and i'm sure you have ways to 
mitigate that, but it'd be good to be a little more cautious on this first round and not overcommit. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do an attack here for three and a flip. So we've got two, so that's mm. going to be five, and he is a mage. One, two, three, four, five. So he's sitting at five. I'm sitting at four. Um, and I guess I could risk getting just a little more damage with a skirmish. Um, but maybe mm. with his health going into the next round, being shapeshifted might be worth having the power. Mm. You know, I'm kind of back and forth on that. Like, maybe I get one, maybe I get two. It's not going to take you off the board, right? Um, so how much do I want to commit to that? So, hmm. Or do you leave from the deck so that if this guy dies, you at least have are forcing me to keep heroes in the middle? Yeah. Eh. It's a risk. Yeah, you're right. Or do you skirmish? I mean, I think I lose if you get a person in there anyways. You think, yeah. It's right, uh, three to four. If she gets in there. You're right. Right. But then I have to keep her in. There's a, there's a, there's a potential that I would move her in, do an attack, and then leave and try and help Elaine in some way. I mean, you have to have she's shapeshifted does she have fast when she's shifted? No, i'm, I'm she wondering where not. you're gonna no. go you have yeah. to come all the way three two yeah. to get a shot at him yeah that's true um and then if you have any tricky cards and you still have sky terror flex so potentially jeremy's sitting on the perfect answer card and my whole thing's gonna fall apart <laughs> when i go to I, I, try I'm, and get I'm tempted uh here to try and see what i get with Oh, this is a long shot. And is it like doing it too early type of thing, you know? <laughs> Do I... Uh, how good is my flips here for a skirmish? Um, let's... I say we go we, we go all in here. Um, we're going to do a skirmish. Okay, bring it. All right, I, I, needed, I needed two. We'll just say that much. Okay. And we got a one. So, oh, so you might have to have some out of hand damage. I didn't count on. So I'll take one damage. I have four health left. Yeah. So that's C. I was looking to do. Well, I think I don't save it. I know this is. Might be a little earlier, so I'm gonna grab Sky oh Tear Flux. Okay. And we're gonna drop Shatter Mine. Oh, and you're gonna deal three damage directly. One, two. So three. I, if I would have had that two, yep, he would have helped. the board. Um, and he did not lead, but yeah, he, yeah. You'd, ha you'd had one less mage to worry about. and um, Right, for the next yeah, round. Yeah, and the control of the dome would be even harder for me to come up with. But that's my, uh, my round. So I, yeah, I had some choices. I, w I went for the. Uh, the showboat there the, the big time okay we're gonna activate um Frey hell she's excited because she's already <laughs> shapeshifted that was key for the freight that she's not gonna have to waste an action because he blocked that i now have to take a movement action and if she wasn't already shapeshifted then this would not go quite as well as it's going to oh man i want it all though i want oops I want one, two, three, four, five. If you had killed him, I'd have come in on that side. <laughs> oh, that's true. That would have been even more helpful. So maybe it was better. Just get you on the edge. Yeah, I'll come to here. Let's go. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, and then she is... Let's see. I am going to win the middle, irregardless, uh, as long as I just move her in there. So do I make my losses on this side here a little less by attacking? Or do I... No, I think maybe I get ready for Make, next round. It makes me nervous. Maybe you have some cards in your hands so cards because you're not you're not worried about attacking no, uh, I'm my not. characters. I'm not. <laughs> in fact, I'm looking at no. You know what? I, let's see if let's see how well we can get here. I'm gonna declare a skirmish action. All right. As my second action. Okay. We're gonna come one, two into here. And All right. We're gonna flip against Eckert. Oh, changing it up. Yes. So I'm ready. No response. Nope. Come up with a plus two on shield slam. All right. So then she is though she's shape shifted, shape -shifted and so. within three spaces of so, core depth. Yep. So, so I went down two instead of using oh. my shield, right? Uh, you actually go down three because I get piercing. Oh, piercing and plus one. From plus core one. Oh, okay. Yeah, piercing because nice. she's shape shifted plus one because she's hanging out with Kordoff the main. So we're now at six here. Ooh, big liar. Kordoff is not shape shifted. His turn ended. So, so we'll take just that health back. 
<laughs> back that one. I might need it. You might need it. All right, so I got one action left. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is spend her one mana for the turn to play Sacrifice. Uh, She's going to lose two HP and make another hero uh, gain four HP. But since she is uh, shapeshifted, that'll be piercing damage on Sotheru. All right, so, so he is off the table. I do have nothing. Yep, so he's going to go round three. She so goes down activated. there. And I will pull him off. And that's going to draw me two cards. So we don't have a lot of three cost cards in our deck, but hopefully we're killing a turn, at least one hero every round. So we're digging through our deck super, super fast. And we put lots of biting time in there so that we can try and find those threes when we need them to lead with. So we've got two more cards, and we're going to have to burn some because we're going to draw two cards at the end of the round anyway. So it might be the right time just to play Abiding Time. Actually, we'll play Abiding Time right at the end so we'll know what we're going to draw up and uh, kind of mess with what we're getting next round. Right now, we're going to do an attack against... Our final attack is going to be against Eckert, and we're just going to get Eckert right on the ropes because our two win conditions that we're going for here is three obstinate, is obstinacy... Nope, sorry, is... It's uh, onslaught. Onslaught. So yeah. three. If I can kill three heroes. So I've already got one, and then Eckert's on the rope. So let's send Eckert another uh, two plus a flip damage and an attack. So that's four. four. One, two, three, four. four. So she's down super low. Um, and then the the other uh, win condition is tamer. So use the outsider uh, to defeat a hero. So if we get Eckert really low, then we can take care of that. And the last thing we're going to do on our turn is going to play Biding Time to predict with Freyhel. And these are actually just going to be predicting cards that um, the Outsider is going to use to try and kill Eckert. So we'll look and see if there's anything we don't like. Uh, in fact, we don't mind if those both get used uh, in the attacking. So we are going to... Um, we'll toss the top one and then hope to dig a little deeper with the uh the outsider nice. okay that brings us to the end of round one where yep. lots of carnage oh. happened yeah we'll clean up these cards a little bit and yeah so we'll do lane one and it looks like you just let me have it so i feel very good about this <laughs> too. i think sir Fothy might need to do something else this next round but uh, i threw a three there okay um so That's we really cleared it out two to six you beat me by Four, so I lose four minions, but only have two. You move four forward. Four. You move forward three. You spawn two more minions. And we will go here and here. And I do the same. And that's going to be loads of trouble if I don't beat you in round two or early round three. So we'll put these back where we can try and slow the bleeding on that side. Nobody did anything on round lane two. So we just load them up. Yep. And technically, player... The second player would spawn theirs first, but oh. it does not matter. Yeah. We're not about it. Double check. All right. Where yeah. are we at? And then we go to the dome where I led with Estrida and I had to give up uh, the Consulting the Heart Neliquin's ultimate to make sure that we had a three. And I had to oh, give up Korjoffs. Korjoffs. Wow. To, uh, do that, but obviously it doesn't count because he is dead. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no, he's a Korjoff is not. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, sorry. Sithuru. I laid oh, it under Sithuru. Oh, you laid it under Sithuru. Yeah, so it didn't, okay. it didn't count towards gotcha. anything. Okay, so, so I have overwhelming numbers in the middle. Yep. Um, oh, and this is mine, and this is yours. So let's keep track of that. Uh, so I get to place this outsider here. He's within range three of... Um, actually, I want to put him where he'll be a pain for you to deal with. Which, where's your Korjoff? Ooh, your Korjoff is here. So let's make it so that your Korjoff can't get into that other lane to mess with me there. We'll block him in. And he will then take an attack action against um, Eckert. So okay. it's three plus uh, the flip, which is two. So that is, oh, but Eckert has armor, so it takes, oh, it takes four damage, which is just enough. Okay. So she is going to be coming back now round three, round three. she has okay. to skip one round because right, yeah. she was activated right. yeah so i draw two cards come up with a couple more helpful cards and finally i have two more actions one of them is going to be a skirmish nope we'll do a shape shift uh, onto astrida uh, to get her shape shifted for the round actually no we'll do it onto frail frail's going to take a shape shifted action and then that's also going to allow her to heal so she gets one plus a flip, so she heals three. One, two, three, gets back up to 15. And then the last thing I'll do is have the outsider, um, you know what, he will, he will skirmish. I was gonna say draw me a card, but I have a handful of cards at the moment and I'm about to draw two more. So 
I'm going to do a skirmish action against... Uh... It's mine here, but you still oh. can hit it. Unless he's... Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm. I mean, he's still ranged, right? The outsider? Yep. Yeah. So, so you not... still can. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? No, it's fine. I'm just thinking whether or not I should have put him here because I was trying to block you from moving over there. Uh, but I that, that was mine. Sorry. Uh, no, no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah, we'll still skirmish against him okay. to try and get um, Onslaught even further along. So two damage to two the damage. flying wing blue yep. Down 12. Leothian. Okay, and then finally we all draw two cards. Yep. Let's go. We'll just go down to six. Okay, I'm getting rid of unfamiliar terrain and this beautiful full art impervious. Nice. They do such a good job with their OP kits. They do. It's for sure, for sure. We are all back up, and I'll let you get set up because I oh, only have thanks. two characters uh, to worry about, so woo. I don't have as many decisions this <laughs> round. And we burned through the sky tear flux, so it's actually I should probably take it out of there in case uh, I don't think I'll be shuffling. Um, but just in case. Okay, so we're going second now. All right. So you know at home, the plan here is you still have Freyhel as a healing abilities and out of hand healing cards that keep your characters alive in this fight if you need to. And you can also turn those around and have them be direct damage. So the goal is round two, now that we own the dome and our opponent has less characters, then we start to move in and save the lanes where we've been falling apart, but continue to hold the dome so we can use that outsider again to kind of finish off the aggression at the end of round two. Note, if the uh, win conditions come up control or your opponent sees what you're up to and backs off and uses good healing and, and has the right counter cards, a little movement out of the way when you're throwing down big attacks, your giant round one, round two attacks just don't get the job done and your opponent sweeps you like a tsunami Yeah, round it, it, three. So. It happens. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what best way to kill you here because mm. um, I just need one shot but i don't want you to pull some shenanigans here on round wow. two and and miss right right because so i need so all my actions Nelequin here down to one health right and this should be off there so oh, yeah. it helps with the board state nice. um i think what we'll do well it felled me last time but uh i think we'll just do a skirmish action first would you like to i would like to respond yeah uh, who is skirmishing by the way uh Korjof, sorry Korjof. i'm activating okay. Korjof here so we don't like that and we think Korjof is going to try and kill neliklin so we can either just ne let neliklin go uh, or we can try and waste all of Korjof's action by playing healing cards so we're going to start with playing sacrifice from freyhel do you have any responses to that um What does Sacrifice do again? Freyhel's going to lose two health, and she's going to give another target hero four HP. Four HP. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to respond to that, and I'm going to do Nightmares Incarnate. Okay, and we were worried about that, so we will respond to Nightmares Incarnate with Nourish. So okay. before you deal three, I get to heal three. All right. Oh, oh, okay. I was worried that you could add line of sight to you. Um, what's his name? Um illusion that would pump that up pump that up no nope. do you have any responses nope. to that okay so we're gonna heal him for three. One, two, three. Oh, sorry that stays on freyhel and then you are gonna deal three. three so he goes down one two three and then we are gonna heal our deal two damage to freyhel and he's gonna heal four. One, two, three, four. Not quite what I was wanting. I was hoping he didn't have out of hand damage so we could keep him alive for a second attack, but it looks like he's going to get him this turn. Um, so with the skirmish, uh, I just want to kill him, but uh, do I need to play coy? And that may have been poor playing on my part because that represents seven out of hand damage I could use on another hero with Freyhel and all I need to do is kill the third hero to win here so I may have been playing poorly there I don't know about that you yeah. definitely have the <laughs> upper hand that's why I'm saying yeah. like do I risk killing him right um he's already burnt two mana he's still dangerous um he, he could do a lot of damage but he's also the fragile link that's going that I'm going to try and break for my third kill and 
think what I'll do is I'll skirmish. Okay. One, two. And then... Oh, he's not going to do damage on the way out? Well... You might as well. Oh, oh, I guess. Yeah. Yes, sorry. So yeah, that's a, so, yeah. <laughs> right here, we go one. Ouch. The and four. then we'll do the two right. out. And then we will actually... Um... Attack that guy right there. Okay. So for four, minion got him. down, minion down. And then we are going to move. Oh, it's just run all the way. Okay, gonna run all the way there, and then um, you're gonna use Shafathi to stab somebody in the back when they come out to try and get That's him. That's the plan. Okay, That's the plan. So let's play it slow and careful here. We could make Shafathi come into the dome to get Neloquin. Um, or one, two, three. Yeah, Nelkin cannot get to where he can harm anybody this turn. Um, so we're gonna have we're gonna have Estrada. Yeah, Estrada can definitely get over to where she can be bothersome. So she's gonna she's gonna move, skirmish, and then attack. So we'll take a move action with Estrada. All right. One, two, three. Now we'll take a move action with Estrada. Oh, sorry, a skirmish action with Estrada. <laughs> Double move. <laughs> Double move. Um, so skirmishing, she'll go one, two to get next to Korjoff, and then flip one, which just does one damage. One damage here, there we go. And then she will play Shattermind from hand, because she is a yellow hero, to deal three one, more. Three. One, two, three. And then she'll declare an attack action. All right. So she will, um, yep, mm, yeah. Two plus two, that does four damage. Four, because it's attack one, two, three, four. All right. And yep, and she is done. All right, sounds good. Um, and so I think I'll go with Shafathi. I think yeah. the oh, choices choice. are strong. <laughs> uh, perfect. So. One of the advantages with this deck too is that having played it numerous times, I have my opening sequence all set up. I'm kind of used to how opponents respond to certain things. So uh, Jeremy is pioneering this deck over here and working his way through how he wants to tweak that and have it become something. So his deck definitely does not have as many reps as mine at the moment. So part of what you're seeing is that disparity, but. All right, here we go. We're gonna go move. Mm. Lock it in there. Oh. Okay. And then we're going to uh, play Clear Mine. I get plus one attack. Okay. Um, any responses? No responses. All right. So then we are going to do an attack. Okay. Any response? No response. All right. So it'd be three plus one, so four, one and whatever the flip here. And so three. So. Seven. Seven to uh, our good friend Estrada. Mm -hmm. Okay, she goes from 14 down to seven. Nice. Not loving life. And then... You can end on a token, right? You can... If I put an illusion, you can end up. Yes, you can it. stand on flat objects, but flat objects cannot be placed onto other flat right. objects. Just curious if I should uh, do a little worship and get prepared if I make it to the next round. I yes. don't have a good feeling that's going to happen. You should not have that feeling. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't really matter. So we will just do. Because I could do a skirmish, but it's not going to crank her down. Uh, much so we will just uh, do a worship there okay so we're gonna then activate Neloquin and he's gonna sneak over to the edge of the dome with the move one two three sorry it doesn't exhaust yet he's gonna declare a skirmish action and since Estrada is next to Korjoff in the bushes we'll have line of sight because she's able to say hey he's over here in the bushes so we're gonna predict I uh, play biting time first and it, Jeremy can of course respond to any of this but 
So you're doing biding time and then doing a skirmish? Correct. Because well, you, you declare, can't. You declare the skirmish, and then uh, both of us, you have a chance to respond. Right. And then I have a chance to respond. So right. I can't actually play a reaction if there's not an action on the stack. Right. So I have to put on an action on the stack. So it's on. And I'm not responding. Yep. yep. So I predict two. I look at these, and I love what I'm seeing. So I just flip that to the top. And, um, yep, we will skirmish in here. Boom. One, two. And then flip, actually, we'll just hide in the bushes while we're at it. One, two, and it has a three range over to there, and it does three piercing damage. And that's it, and that's uh, game. That's game, yeah, the attack would finish him off, though. So. Yeah, nice. Nice quick one. Fast and furious, yeah. yeah. This this game, this deck wins or loses on turn two. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's what you want to do with a deck like that. That's uh, an awesome start there. I was just trying to think of what, maybe if I got another coin off the table, I don't think that actually would have mattered. No, because I still have Kordoff and Freyhel, and right. as, as Strida posted up, so they these two have the range, and she's set up to be piercing. Um, and yeah, if I had, if you had Nelklin off the board, then I wouldn't probably have played. Well, no, let's say I played this. Yeah, if you get Nelklin off the board, you still have two more characters coming to try and finish off Kordoff. Right, right. So the strength is that you just you see so many plus twos round one and two with the aggression that uh, that your opponent's health drops a lot. You, I think you had to like either hold characters back or bring more tanky characters. And going first is a bad against you. Second it's is good because yeah. you kind of have to, which yeah. is a good technique yeah. coming in for you, to having that second reaction to kind of chase characters around. Yeah. Um, so through, I don't know if I should have put them up in the mix um, and right. made you he chase him. Deep, deep in my territory, so that gave me a couple extra actions because I didn't have to spend movement to Movement get to, to come to him. I just thought maybe I would have a shot to take a person off the board, but it might have been the wrong move there. And I probably shouldn't, if I would have brought Shafathi into the middle just for fire, I might have, instead of trying to control lane. Right. Then then maybe have one, or maybe maybe Nelaklin doesn't make it through round one. Or and just, so, yeah, yeah, completely yeah, they, re-stack yeah. it and go both lanes control and make you have to right. stop one of them round two, right? If, if, because if I force this one here, yeah. You're forced here. You know you have to pull one of those back by the end of round two, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah, so if you can make it so that I haven't killed a third hero on round two and you've managed to keep those those tokens pushed down to the end, which you can really do. Like, yeah, if you run, like you did, run back here with him and lead for three, I'm going to lose this lane. You're going to be able to push it. And even if you don't get it all the way there turn one, you'll get it there turn two, unless I really shift to a control game. Right. And then you could do a similar thing over here. And if you only presented one target in the middle here, you've only lost one hero. Right. And I'm, and, and yeah, if I, if I don't have line of sight with this outsider to those people on the edge to try and beat up on them, it's really hard to do though. It's really hard to keep enough heroes safe from such huge aggression. Right. In the beginning. But I had lots of fast cards, so I could have sat yes. somebody here. Yeah. Then you like Korjoff, I think he was on that side. I believe he was, or maybe he wasn't, but whoever was. But yeah. <laughs> um, but then that puts these both at the end of this turn. So round two, you have to stop one of those. Yes. So you're one Unless of your I characters. drop your third character before then. Right. Yeah. But what are the odds of you chasing down two both. characters on this yeah. opposite side? And if I only put one in here, and let's say I play Koi on one of the sides. That's the trick. Is that right? The, that. No, knowing your deck now, obviously. Right. No, in yeah, that exactly. Moment. Yeah, but, so but, now you know what I'm up to. There's <laughs> a easy, some easier answers. Yeah, since I probably won't, even though my team can hit, probably won't hit as fast as yours. Yeah, so right. being able to get um, get a little like distance, like you said, yeah. and that makes you have to chase. Yeah. Right, you have yes, to chase and versus more of my and... actions go into movement than into cards that then to actions Rage. that are hurting you. Right. And I don't have that chance to do an extra shape shift, or I don't have that chance yeah. to do a lead from hand, so that I'm really weak. On really weak, and then that may, maybe lets me rebound and then get a character, pick somebody off. Once you have to deal with these, right? Right. Then I can try to be a little more aggressive. Yeah, I think that's a better answer. Is you play a little coy, and then you also drop one of my heroes in response to me dropping one of yours. Right. And I don't have that. I'm not getting to steamroll you, and, and I don't have this enough momentum to finish out. Yeah, and then that makes me allows me to get into my better cards, which yeah. you already. So I, I was wondering, I was holding Shattermind, which was fine. I think I played it at the right time. There was no other time to do it, but uh, it wouldn't have mattered. But I was one away from right. killing him, right? So right. that flip is huge, and so those predicts are huge. Yes. So that's another reason I like Kichi or the I took. Uh, 
um, bind, binding, biting time out. Okay. Um, but they're so key, like yeah. seeing what that next thing is. Cause if I could have already seen it or Shafafi, yeah, especially, key. especially like you, you told me earlier, if you have a deck that you can slide minus ones in, if you've got those, those biting times in there. Right. Um, but I, I feel like they eat up just a little bit of space in your deck. So I wonder, I, I haven't seen a ton of people playing with them. So I wonder if just having, knowing your deck well enough and having a consistent enough deck, uh, eliminates the need for yeah them. for you i mean obviously it's crucial in those certain moments and maybe it's more crucial in maybe finding those lead cards for you even it is, and getting maximum octane because if this deck only has some octane then it doesn't quite damage you enough you don't quite have enough you don't lose quite enough control by getting characters off the board so right like, like i have to be sometimes i'm searching just for an extra plus one on the three like like when I eliminated you with um, the sacrifice off right. of Freyhill, yeah. I needed it to be four, and it wasn't going to be. I'd done the math. If I got two on everything, you were going to be at two. You were going to have one health left when I hit you for four. But I got lucky and hit that three, so it pushed you down just enough oh. that I didn't need to do a full attack with her. I knew that I could that, that even if you like canceled my attack or something, sacrifice was still going to be enough to. to yeah, so that one cost, and also those one costs. Um, cards in the first round right my deck is just loaded with like i'm i'm would, going to give you so many yeah. options it's right like, you didn't have to commit to like i have to do a skirmish and an attack to finally eke that out right you're like here i know my cards yeah. and i can already focus on the next character for the next round to yeah. like soften them up yeah there's uh two sacrifice two nourish and two shatter mind uh which are the out of hand damage cards in here and then the one uh rampant hatred is the uh the other card that has a plus one on it instead of a a a plus two so those are the ones that do out of hand damage but also that bring down the modifiers what i'm most terrified with this deck is if you're sitting over there with the sky tear flex and mm. you've got dodge mm. or you're sitting over there and you've got charm you're just waiting for frey hell to come and heal you right you're like hang on i'll take that token off of you right before you heal me and you actually will heal me and i'll and, and i'll yeah it'll uh, reverse so and and those are the type of control cards the moves and stuff where you're sitting on the outside with your lead which then allows yes. me to control the outsider yes. which allows me not to take some damage yes. and and uh, one reason i like the outsider for this deck uh, obviously it also helped vigilante might have been better for me in the sense that you have to come from a tower right the vigilante it, does but the vigilante is so flexible i have to come from a tower or a nexus oh so yeah so i guess it's, it's not to, right into the but i guess in this there. round when we locked it up uh -huh. you, you would have had a harder time watch what happens with that and, oh. the, and the reason why i love um the vigilante is because let's say that my opponent is wise to me and plays coy and starts pushing lanes as long as i control the middle the vigilante can actually take out three minions in a round so their ability to push hard on a lane right. is really decreased i can jump in here or well or from the nexus and then skirmish on a minion take the act or, and take the ability uh what is it that allows them to skirmish a minion it is a uh, slash so you slash. take the slash action first and then for the the rest of his two actions he can attack minions right uh, and he's a melee right so right. you do have to be next you do yeah so slide over if they've come all the way down you slide over if they haven't come all the way down you start at the nexus and slide up right and you hit one hit another one hit another one and you're not going to miss because you don't have any minus ones in the deck so, so you, you can know. slow that down but let's say I'm going aggro, and you like you did, you locked up all this, so it's like, how do I get into this dome? You here? just come from Start the other anger. Yeah, one, two, you're right. I might not quite get there uh, the first action, but at least two of the actions will be able to deal. I mean, I think Eckert was here, so you would have yeah. been fine, right? Like, you would have gotten two. I think I had one here, yeah. and Sithru died in that round. Oh, so but you're right. If, if Eckert dies first... Oh, no, I went to Sithru first. Yeah, so then Eckert, you're right, was in range of... of that initial skirmish from yeah vigilante. so it would have been dangerous either way uh i haven't played a lot with the dark vigilante uh just as just haven't picked it yet uh i really like the bear he's great um why do you like the bear ah uh, just he hides in the shadows <laughs> uh, i don't know he, I, he can be flexible on the attacks but he also does a lot of pull he does you know what i mean he can really adjust the playing field um which could be key for me in these situations where maybe i wanted to push or pull you and i don't have that in my deck right, right. like that can be that extra option where a lot of decks already have that built in you don't but you you're outside really... bring some control that you didn't put in your deck yeah cool. which which is cool which yeah. is very cool it looks like we have uh some people chatting up it looks like uh jeremy said hi in there and um also my sister they just moved to California and they're down in California and they're watching. So thanks for 
watching and Jared, thanks for watching as well. Um, but yeah, it was a great match. It was fun. I hadn't seen your deck in action. So that was a lot of fun. And I got a really up close <laughs> look at the damage. So I'm going to regroup. I have a, a deck that I've been thinking about. Um, kind of a little bit of what your style is a real like hunter style deck, which is could be fun yeah and um, i'll i'll throw this up on the uh pvp website if you uh you can look in their deck list section it'll be uh under manzanita and the title will be carpe diem so it, it, you can already build it just put all the plus twos in there that make sense and then those uh seven plus ones that i talked about but yeah, yeah. and and we'll see how it evolves too because this is because we're going to have that new set coming out the new set gives soon. me even more because one of the the new objective in the new set is that the outsider is now a target. So right. it's like, I want to rush in and control the dome, and then I'll pick where the outsider is, and then all my buddies will be ready to or kill that outsider turn two. You could, and I, I can weaken them up, and if I've gotten one of your characters off the board, it sorry, makes this it is easier. my soapbox. Yeah, no. I get to go last twice if I'm the second player. So That's key. So I can do two, just an onslaught to take, the, take them off at the end. So I don't have to get them so low that gives you an opportunity to kill them. I can just wait until it's just my two characters left and pour into that once again it falls into your out. strat of round two win right two like win, you right. had a round two and you're yeah. either going for the outside yeah. which makes them have to really commit to the dome maybe yeah. when they don't want to yeah like pulling them from lanes right exactly and then getting them close to danger right? i want a dirty fight in the dome every yeah. game if i can get it so all yeah. right perfect yeah. awesome well i appreciate you playing with me and we'll uh do some more um i'm hoping to stream you know as much as i can and uh manzanina he's nice enough to show up and Help me out. <laughs> permitting. Yep. Yeah, and I'll hopefully have some other uh, friends and maybe family on. And uh, Joy, thanks for coming out and watching the stream. And, and until we see you next time. Great.